So we're all familiar with the saying that two's company and three's a crowd, right? Well, in anime, it's actually the opposite because three is actually company and four and anything beyond that is just a group of people who exist to uh, bring about pain or joy to the world. Anyway, today I want to talk about my favorite trios in anime. Uh, for some reason, it's a big trope within the shows and the community to always have three people as a group and there are just so many variations of it because there's so many shows out there so that's what i want to do today so let's just get into it these are my favorite personal ones i have not seen every show out there so if you don't see your favorites on here i'm sorry i probably haven't seen it uh, you can comment down below what your favorites are by the way also subscribe because you're you know are already here and we're doing housekeeping uh but yeah so one piece is not going to be included because i don't watch it actively so if you're looking for like luffy and zoro as a, a trio with uh, Sanji, he's not on here, they're not on here, I'm sorry. And there are a few other shows when I was looking to make in the list that I don't watch. So uh, if I miss yours, I'm so sorry. Okay, so coming in at number four is going to be a trio that kind of inspired this entire video itself because season two of Jujutsu Kaisen is currently airing. It's going to be Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara. Now there are some out there who do say that these kind of are a copycat of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, which, which I'd say only a little bit in the fact that there's a dynamic of two guys and a girl that's probably the only through line i think with that group now oh, there's a couple other ones but anyway yes uh these are like my new like next gen favorites um as far as the trio goes they do very much balance each other out i do like how sometimes they have their own separate adventures together like you know megumi and yuji will do something together and nobara and yuji will form a little bond later on in the seasons and then we also have you know nobara and megumi which they have like the least interaction but i feel like they have the most history together um they all balance each other out uh, i feel like every trio on here kind of does do that with uh you know nobara and yuji being like the goofy ones and uh megumi being the more serious one who kind of like you know keeps everybody in line basically and uh yeah they're just fun together and they they do things that are just hilarious especially like everyone's favorite um post episode little thing that they had with uh megumi finding a girl and getting her number or whatever but then the group kind of like tries to break it up i thought that was like the funniest thing and uh yeah they do have like the funniest dynamic i feel like out of everyone in this trio and their their love you can see it for each other is growing throughout the season what we get in this next season, I don't know, because currently we're focusing on the older trio. And I feel like that's kind of like a through line with Jujutsu Kaisen as like everybody's a team of three. Uh, but this current gen, uh, what we have on screen and what we've gotten in the, the show so far, I, I am really enjoying it. And I do feel like they are like a, a stronger trio amongst the other trios in anime. Okay, coming in at number three is going to be probably the saddest trio out of all the ones I'm going to talk about. It's going to be, of course, from Attack on Titan. It's going to be Eren, Mikasa, and Armin. Uh, I do say sad because, uh, spoilers, if you have not seen the show, where we're currently at, um, this is your warning now, don't go ahead. They are kind of separate and they're fighting each other and they started off as such a strong group that... Uh, Loved each other and um, at some points a little bit I guess toxic love of each other and now that they've grown apart and they're kind of like separate in ideas at least while well, Mikasa and um, Armin are together but they're trying to fight and save Eren but it's just becoming a lost cause with that man over there oh uh, yeah it is the saddest one of them all and um, yeah I feel like probably the most toxic like I mentioned even before all this happened they do kind of have like a weird like affinity for each other especially Mikasa and uh Aaron, how she feels about him, how she feels like she must protect him. And Armin is kind of like the, oh, I don't, you know, I'm just, you know, whatever. And Aaron and then we're like, come on, you can get up. Like, he's the pushover of the group. But then, you know, as the series has evolved, Armin's kind of become his own person, which is cool to see him, like, step out of a shadow. Uh, but yeah, as far as the trio goes, them together, they do form a strong team, I guess, whenever they are working together, even though I feel like uh, we didn't get to see them at their strongest because when we cut to this final season we see them a little older and they have kind of like trained more so we didn't get to see them strong as a unit we get to just see them you know the first um taking of the city thing so i feel like because what we saw actually on screen of them together they weren't like super strong because armin kind of held them back at certain points and sometimes aaron kind of held them back and makasa has always been like the strong one of the group and yeah so as a trio though it works because you have to have good and the bad and i feel like this trio exhibits kind of like the bad side of a trio and what could possibly happen if uh you know your trio falls apart all right coming in at number two one of my all-time favorite trios in anime 
a little bit of a newer one, but at least their show is finished currently as opposed to uh, Yuji and Obara, the show is still going on. Uh, it's going to be Mob, Reagan, and Dimpo from Mob Psycho 100. This trio is an unlikely pairing. It is an adult man, a, a high schooler, and a ghost who is kind of a freak. They're my favorite because they are just so funny. I said Yuji and them, they were hilarious, but I feel like this group itself is like way beyond that hilarious. And uh, it does show you kind of an interesting relationship between the older Reagan and then the younger mob and how he's kind of becoming like the older brother, father type figure to him and like learning how to become a better um, person through mob who is learning to himself how to become a person in general because he's so suppressed as a person. Uh, and Dimple is just like his battle between himself and like, do I want to be a good person or do I want to like be a piece of shit that I can be that I feel like I, I need to be. And throughout it all, the journey that they have together, um, I, just, I don't want to give like super spoilers here. Uh, it does evolve to something beautiful. And um, when we thought, uh, uh, yeah, this is a big spoiler. When we thought that Dimple might be gone, it was kind of like, oh man, this is the end. But at the end, when he comes back, we're like, oh, they're united again. And he does get redeemed in a way. And uh, yeah, it's just like a beautiful uh, relationship, especially when, you know, Mob is kind of losing his mind. A lot of the times, Dimple and Reagan are the ones who kind of bring him down and settle him down. And I feel like it was nice that they kept that through. As many friends as Mob made along the way, they kept this trio as the main lines. You wouldn't expect them to be, um, throughout the series, his friend, because you kind of feel like sometimes Reagan is taking advantage of Mob and he's gonna catch on and be like, well, what are you doing? And we felt like, you know, Dimple doing his own thing is being evil and you're like, oh, he's gonna betray him at any moment. And I did like the fact that they kept them together throughout the story and they didn't make it seem like any one of them betrayed Mob in his own way. And of course, Mob, I guess, as he evolved, it's a good thing that he didn't kind of like outgrow them as friends and he wanted to keep them in his life. And uh, yeah, beautiful trio, love them. One of my favorites. And you knew it was coming, the number one trio of all anime is going to be the classic Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. It is the standard for trios for some reason. Um, it's, I guess the, the story itself does depend upon their relationship and their storylines um, throughout the entire series. Not so much Boruto, obviously, because that's not even about him at all. But the main Naruto story, it does always come back to them and their paths and how they interact with each other, especially Naruto and Sasuke. You know, they do say that Sakura is useless, which at some point she can be, but she is important to the story and to the group dynamic itself. There's the first, I guess, um, yeah, I think it is the first, yeah, the first love triangle trio here in this list that I've included. The other ones have just been kind of friends, but this one is like a love triangle thing with, you know, with Naruto loving Sasuke. I mean, well, actually, yeah, but also uh, Naruto loving Sakura and Sakura loving Sasuke and Sasuke loving revenge or whatever. It's um, a whole thing. And I feel like, yeah, growing up watching this, you do kind of relate to it. If you ever feel like you've been in that sort of situation, like a love triangle friendship type deal, uh, it was cool to see that in an anime. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Not like a direct romance anime. So it was the first time we saw it within like a an action show, I guess. Uh, but yeah, their story together is so important and that they do stay together through all of it is, you know, a testament to their bond and their relationship. No matter what they went through, it always led back to each other. You know, the way Sasuke treated Naruto and Naruto just being adamant about like, no, this is my friend. I want him to come back and be good. I know he has good inside of him. And Sakura kind of like being torn about the entire situation, just like, uh, you know, it's it's bad what he's doing, Sasuke, but it's also like, I love him. And Naruto, maybe I, I do love you and I appreciate you and I take, you know, I'm taking you for granted. And yeah, it's just like the quiz essential trio within an anime. They have so many layers within them. And um, yeah, it is a good trio. And you, when you're watching the show, you can kind of identify with one of these characters and be like, well, I think this one suits me. So I like him the most, or this one's the coolest because he's cool, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, they do have a very varied history and past together and they do make up probably my favorite trio amongst them. I don't know if it's my favorite like storyline, the way it ended or it's going, I guess, but it is a great um, relationship that they had throughout the show and what we got to see throughout. So that's why three is the magic number within anime. Those are my favorite trios in anime. So like I said earlier, if I did miss some of your favorites, you can always comment them down below and let me know which ones you um, think are the best, which is you might think are the worst. Subscribe, all that stuff, all that is gonna be down below for you and as well as following us on the social medias and all that fun stuff. And um, yeah, that's that's trios in anime. That's, 
it's a fun time. And uh, I saw a meme earlier this week of it's where it's like, I like hanging out in a group of three because I can go non-verbal and my other two friends will entertain each other. And I feel like that's like super important. Three is a great, great time within a group. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys. I will check you guys out next time. And um, till I see you next time, go farm a trio and go explore the world.